Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting Manga Monday and today we are reviewing the series Martial Magic and Muscles. I first heard about the series a little bit before the anime came out actually. I started watching the anime series and I had some fun with it so I decided why don't I catch up on the manga series to give you a full review, give you the most researched review on if this is worth checking out or not. Before we get into it, keep in mind I do make my own comics and if you would like to check those out you can head over to burningstarcomics.net or join the fan club to of course get sneak peeks of newer comics that I'm coming out with. So what is martial magic and muscles. It's kind of like a Harry Potter parody with Saitama as the main character. So we live in a world where magic is the norm. Most people are just born with magic as indicated by the lines on their face. Usually the amount of lines you have on your face will tell how skilled or how much magical power you have when you're born. However, our main character, Mosh, was not born with any line on his face. He has no magic ability, but rather instead, he finds himself very capable of growing muscles. And so he spends most of his days pumping iron and getting his body to peak musculature, which as it turns out, is a little bit beyond what we would consider normal human limits. It's a much more anime logic of musculature, but the world that he lives in is not very tolerant of people that can't use magic. It's kind of like, I guess, a eugenics world. <laughs> After a, a series of circumstances, he finds himself getting enrolled into the school of magic with a fake line that he uses and he's got to pretend that he, he can use magic, using his strength to kind of fool people into thinking that he's actually using magic when he's not. And of course, the further you get into the series, the more villains are introduced, and the more people he has to fight with different magic abilities. He makes a bunch of friends along the way, and overall, it's a pretty fun series. Not only giving uh, a parody for Harry Potter, but also referencing other shonen manga out there, such as, you know, Dragon Ball or One Piece. I think there's even a Full Metal Alchemist reference in there, My Hero Academia. A bunch of head nods, nudges, and wink winks. And while this is a comedy first and foremost, it does do fairly exciting action scenes. For a parody shonen manga, it actually does a good job with all of its shonen elements. And I found myself quite invested in it as the plot thickened, as it became a little bit more serious, but also as it became more serious, whenever the, of course, eventual jokes came in, it genuinely caught me off guard because I was getting so invested, because I was expecting it to go a more serious route, and then they just hit you with the joke. Obviously, I don't think this series is necessarily for everyone. I think you have to go into it with the right expectations. If you're expecting it to be your typical shonen, you might be disappointed with how they're exactly handling the power dynamics, with how they handle the, th the conclusions to the fight scenes, with Mosh just being super strong and therefore win. And while I, I made the joke that he was the Saitama of the series, there are some obvious differences, I would say, between Masha's character and, say, Saitama or even Mobs from Mob Psycho 100. I would argue, of course, Saitama and Mob have a little bit more depth to them, perhaps? Maybe that's a bit of a hot take, but I find that they have more of an emotional range, despite the fact that they're standard face is that, you know, deadpan face that they all share, Mob and Saitama will show other emotions. While as Mosh, it seems that the artist, the mangaka, felt the need to show him with the same expression very, very consistently, which I find interesting because despite the fact that Mosh is showing the same exact expression throughout the whole manga, I'm still able to pick up on other subtle cues to tell how he's feeling. 
it almost seems like an achievement in art, the fact that you can show the same expression on a character's face, but I still somehow understand what he's feeling. And there's definitely a lot of compliments I can throw at that s at this series. That would be one of them, is the fact that despite this main character having the same expression, I can still tell what he's feeling. I thought that the, the blank expression was going to get on my nerves after a while, like it was going to disconnect me from the character. Funny enough, it didn't. Or at least not entirely. Another thing that I think might bother some other people is this trope, which is very common in shonen, where the villains become the good guys. And that is very, very much present in this manga series. Oh my god. Like, most of the villains are gonna be good guys. I don't know if that if that's a spoiler, if I shouldn't say that, but it's a trope, it exists for a lot of shonen, and it exists a lot more here. <laughs> I usually get very upset about this trope because it can be kind of frustrating when you grow to really hate a villain, but they, they turn good all of a sudden. And, you know, they give some sad backstory and all of a sudden everything's forgiven. Let's make it up. We're besties now. That can get on my nerves personally. But for this particular series, it didn't grind on me as much as I thought it would. I didn't have nearly as much of a problem with it. And I think it's because I'm not taking the series as seriously. Because it's a action comedy focusing on some more comedy aspects that I was kind of taking it more uh, with a light-hearted tone. Like it didn't really matter as much if the villains didn't stay villains. I am fully caught up on the manga series and it seems like it's uh, approaching its end very very soon. I think it only has like maybe one or two more chapters left and it's just all wrapped up. By the time I come out with this video, it might very well be wrapped up. It might be done. But I enjoyed it. I actually did enjoy this series. Whether or not the anime is worth checking out, obviously, it's kind of up to you. I've heard some people say that they actually prefer the manga to the anime. I found the manga to be very engaging. The anime is fine. It's okay. I think one of the things that annoy me about the anime is the fact that they have very odd music choices in some sections. I understand uh, the idea of using modern rap for like whenever a character is doing a cool guy thing. <laughs> they do that with Mosh. And for me, it just kind of breaks my immersion. <laughs> I, I don't know. Just so Something about it's not working for me, you know? I think the fight scenes are fine in the anime. I, th I think they're very much acceptable. But I will say, reading the manga, despite the fact that it's primarily a comedy, they really did do a good job of making you feel the weight behind those fight scenes. And I was able to follow what was going on just fine just by reading it as panels on a page. So I don't think you'd be really missing out if you decided to skip the anime and just read the manga and get fully caught up on it. It wouldn't take you that long to get fully caught up on the manga because unlike other shonens out there, it's actually pretty short. I mean, if it's ending already at only like, what, 160 something chapters? It's, yeah, it's very short compared to some other shonen series out there. I was able to, to finish it up in just a couple days. If you're more of an anime watcher person, go see the anime. I think it's fine. Go enjoy yourselves. But yeah, I thought this was a pretty charming, lighthearted action comedy. I genuinely enjoyed it, despite the fact that it was tropey, despite the fact that not taking itself that seriously. It really goes to show you how powerful the execution of something that's just well written can be, you know? I, I talk about it all the time, but that tropes for a story, while you can get burnout on tropes seeing the same thing over and over again, if you see the same thing 
done very, very well, then it can still grab your intrigue, I think. While as something that's done over and over again, and it's done mediocrely, you're not going to be really interested in it. I think they did pretty well with this series. For what it is, what it's trying to be, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the characters, I enjoyed the plot, I had a ton of fun all the way up to the end. So there's my little review of Mosh, Magic, and Muscles. Let me know if there's any other series that you would like me to check out. There are a couple that are on my reader list, so I'm gonna see what I can finish first for next Manga Monday. Also, let me know what you personally thought about this series, if you've checked it out or if you've just been watching the anime so far. Share your own thoughts and opinions where you agree or where you disagree with me down in the comments section below. Like the video if you did enjoy and would like to see more manga reviews just like these. Check out BurningStarComics.net. As I said before, join the fan club. Be a fan of Dan. And subscribe to get notified on more videos of mine. I'll see you next time, guys. Till then, bye!